All right, hello people from the internet. Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, the time has come for me to make a non-gameplay video once again. Today I am going to be talking about a question made by Ninja Noafa uh, recently. Since I seem knowledgeable and also play strong 0 0.30, why do pe some people think the newer versions are trash? Can I shed some light? Um, this video is aimed at people that, just as Ninja, Nuofa, have not been playing for that long and therefore lack the, um, the context as for why some people do not like the newer versions of the game or why they so strongly uh, and passionately disagree with some decisions that the development team has made throughout this time. Um, so, to begin with, um, I can tell you that the core philosophy of Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup's design is for um, fun gameplay to be the optimal gameplay. Optimal gameplay needs to be fun. Um, that's probably the most important thing uh, that you can derive from the uh, design philosophy of uh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Um, the... Um, a uh, key point here is that um, optimal gameplay in a game like NetHack, which is another roguelike, would be somewhere along the lines of using your pet to identify um, the um, beatitude of certain items to see if they're cursed or something before you equip them, or to identify items with the shopkeeper, um, depending on the price that they give you, or gather every consumable there is in the dungeon to blank them, to repurpose them, or to make some alchemy, that kind of thing. Um, so these kind of fetch quests are not really stimulating, they're just like boring, busy work that you have to do if you want to win the game, pretty much. Uh, not saying that you must, but most people will probably have to do it. And if you were to die because you didn't do it, you're going to feel bad because you didn't submit yourself to the grind. Uh, so you kind of have to do it, just as a failsafe, even if you don't end up uh, making use of any of the... Um, uh, perks of doing such busy work, uh, but anyway, that is not fun gameplay by any means. It is uh, very, very boring gameplay. Um, Crawl doesn't have anything like that, but it kinda did used to... not, ne not as extreme as NetHack. I don't think it was ever as extreme as NetHack. Um, but um, it did have some things such as victory dancing. Mm, this is probably not what people are complaining about when they uh, mean the newer versions are trash, but victory dancing was a thing that existed in a very old crawl. I think it was removed in 0 0.9. I'm not 100% sure of that. It may have been removed a bit later than 0 0.9. Um, but uh, victory dancing was like, instead of your experience going to your skill uh, screen the way that you have determined it, whenever you kill something, it went to something called the experience pool, which was depleted whenever you exercised any of the skills uh, that you wanted to train. Um, uh, another funny thing about the uh, experience pool is that getting hit by draining drained your experience pool. So like that was experience that didn't go towards your skills even, the, even though you had killed the monsters. Uh, so what people used to do to, you know, make use of that experience before a draining monster appeared and robbed you of all your hard-earned experience was to do some victory dancing, um, which in this case um, means repeating uh, an annoying action over and over and over again uh, to deplete the experience pool. Uh, it could be something like standing next to a quokka for like 200 turns, dodging every attack, um, or standing next to another quokka for another 200 turns, tanking every attack, so you can trade dodging or armor respectively, uh, swinging your weapon, like hitting uh, bushes or so, so you could train your weapon, um, that kind of thing, shooting, etc., etc., casting spells, you know, victory dancing. Um, because you used to do it after every fight so you could consume the experience. Um, this change, 
left to almost immediate like as soon as people determined that that was the optimal way to play crawl and that it was not a particularly fun way to play crawl uh, a change was enacted that made it so that people didn't have to do that to play crawl optimally in the form of the more um rigorous control that you now get in the um, a skill uh, screen that I am so fond of uh, micromanaging myself mm, that like my micromanagement is something that I feel like is a good thing to comment on it's not optimal to to do what I do like you can perfectly win the game um, living in an auto and just like going your way uh, I like to do it the way I like to do it because I personally feel like it gives me more uh, early game power, which is uh, at a point in the game where it helps me the most to be powerful, uh, that kind of thing. Mm, it may be a psychological thing, who really knows? Uh, all that I know is that it works for me, and at the end of the day, in Crawl, you should do what works for you. Um, it's not the point of the video but it's just a little example of something that was uh, shed away from a previous version of the game um, more recent changes that people are probably not so happy about are uh, the removal of traps the way that they used to be uh, so um, monsters used to be able to trigger traps um, as in, a monster steps on a shaft and gets shafted, right? And then you didn't get shafted. But what this did was that it guaranteed you that um, any tile where a monster had stepped on that didn't trigger a trap was a tile where there was no trap. So what people started doing was making scripts that automatically uh, excluded every tile that a monster had not stepped on to avoid getting shafted, because who likes to get shafted? And if you can do that um, to avoid getting shafted, why not do it if you want to win, if your objective is to win the game? That is optimal gameplay that, once again, is not that fun, uh, because you have to set up your script and everything. Um, so the way that traps used to be was reworked, and now we have exploration traps uh, that only affect you, and they're rather random. Uh, that's a change that people definitely do not like, because um, traps can get pretty messed up in this game. So on, a ha on one hand, like I kind of understand the disdain for exploration traps. On the other hand, they kind of make the game more interesting. I just wish they were not so extreme. Um, there's some situations when it comes to, wow, so, such reckless gameplay. Uh, sorry for that. But like, uh, there's some situations with exploration traps where it just feels like you die. Like you're, uh, you press O at the very beginning of the game, you get shafted three floors, and the first thing you find is, I don't know, a water moccasin, and then you die. Um, yeah, that that's not particularly fun gameplay in my opinion, and in, uh, I think that there should be more steps taken to prevent that kind of ridiculous situation where, like, as a direct consequence of hitting a trap, you die. Uh, in a situation where if you had not hit that trap, you probably would have won the game. Um, it happens very rarely, but it happens. It's not a 0% chance for it to happen. And in my opinion, the ideal state would be uh, for it to be a 0% for it to happen. Like, I mean, getting hit by a trap and immediately absolutely being doomed to die um, without any kind of counterplay. Once you get shafted deeper into the game, like say D10 or so, once you've already identified a couple of consumables and stuff, it's more interesting to get shafted. It's actually kind of exciting, I would even go as far as to say, because you get the chance to um, exercise your resource management skills and like... Um, determine risk versus reward, like do I want to continue exploring, trying to find the stairs? Or um, or what do I want to do? Like, uh, do I want to fight monsters here that give me more experience? Maybe I can find uh, the temple. Maybe I can find um, altars of gods that I failed to find in the temple. That kind of thing. Uh, getting shafted is uh, a rather interesting opportunity for rather interesting gameplay, uh, which comes at a rather um, hefty downside of sometimes preventing you from playing the game at all, uh, which is pretty lame. Yeah. Um, 
So I can ag I can somewhat agree with the design for exploration traps once again. Um, another interesting change that I've seen people be uh, annoyed at would be exploration. No, not exploration traps. <laughs> I already mentioned that positional magic. Yes, positional magic is uh, a change that some people were very annoyed by. Uh, there's some very um, well-renowned veterans of the game with a lot of wins and a lot of experience that just straight up stop playing the game because of the uh, positional magic changes. So, uh, this change was enacted in 0 0.26, I think. I think if you were to start a 0 0.25 game, you could still get Bolt of Fire and that kind of thing. Um, so, a bunch of spells that required uh, beam targeters, Bolt of Fire, Bolt of Cold, Bolt of Draining, Bolt of Poison, uh, Bolt of Magma were removed from the game and uh, the spell schools were reworked into being more distinct from each other and interesting uh, so that you didn't just get, oh, it's like literally the same spell as in this other school, but like a different damage flavored, um, which, yeah. Um, this makes it so that deciding on a spell school and diversifying is more interesting um, than just like saying, oh, I need cold damage for these monsters. So I'm going to get this spell that's literally the same as this other spell, except that it's instead of being fire damage, it's cold damage. Um, so, as I already mentioned, the bolt spells are the most um, obvious examples of these. There were other spells that were reworked when the positional magic changes happened, such as Mystic Blast, for example. Uh, Mystic Blast used to be like Stone Arrow, very reminiscent of Stone Arrow, and the thing that it turned into uh, is significantly better and significantly more enjoyable to use than the old uh, Mystic Blast. Um, but yeah, there, there's probably more spells that were reworked in the um, positional magic um, revamp of spells, but I don't really have a list of all of them. Uh, if you go and start a couple of mages in 0 0.26 and like win a couple of mages, or rather 0 0.25, sorry, if you start them in that version, you will notice the difference. It's like super obvious. There's a ton of spells that were reworked uh, there. Um... I don't dislike the change. At the very beginning, I was rather um, mm, skeptical of the change, but I've been playing with the change for a while. Like uh, 0.26, I was already streaming, and I pretty much every change from 0.24 onwards, I've had my uh, fair share of experience with. Uh, even though I started playing in 2011, I haven't really been active for the entirety of those 11 years. Um, that's why I'm talking only from the very old stuff and the very new stuff, or the somewhat new stuff. There was a gap in between that I didn't really get to experience or that I was not so um, in the loop when when those things happened because I was in high school it was a rather turbulent time in my life so I was not really playing crawl um, but anyway um, those are the biggest changes of newest versions that I can think of um, every time that um, there's rather big changes in trunk there's gonna be um, passionate purists that will immediately jump and say, oh, the game is ruined. Uh, the game has lost all its uh, personality and stuff. Uh, no flavor, no, no, no anything. Uh, it's so dull. But as I already said at the beginning, like the people that make those arguments are probably people who really enjoy the, the roguelikes of yesteryear, uh, which I personally consider to be rather obsolete design as of today. The Ang bands, the um, the Adams, the um, the dungeon crawl stone soups, even uh, to a certain degree, I would say that Kochmind retains uh, a rather substantial amount of this. Um, but yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway, um, that's what I think. I uh, hope that more experienced players, or like, uh, um, I, I hope that we can hear from some more experienced players um, what they think about this. 
And uh, if you personally don't play the newer versions of Crawl, uh, if you could leave a comment s telling us why, uh, or if what I said is somewhat accurate, like if you don't like Crawl as it is nowadays, but you like NetHack, that kind of thing, I would also appreciate a comment. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a nice rest of your day or whatever. Um, and um, have a good one. And thank you to my supporters on Patreon, Anthony Emergence, Blink and Die, Dulos Vol, and Inon. Any and all uh, donations that I get in either Patreon or um, PayPal or cryptocurrency will go to the uh, font of my aunt. My uncle um, recently passed away and she was left a widow with two daughters. So I would like to support her as much as possible. Your contributions have very real impact in the very real lives of some people that are very close and very... Uh, appreciate this to me so i would appreciate them thank you for everything